shout out to the AMZ Army. So, you can see here the earnings effect. People who held tight in AMZ have probably recovered. If you factor in the dividends, now let's take a look at AMZ. Hmm. Well, they have captured according to this. Wow, wait a minute. This is up 5.46 and yield max is up 6.43. One of the things that I want to know about these ETFs is if they have their own supply and demand issue. In other words, riddle me this. Can an ETF move based on not the underlier, but based on the ETF itself? the outstanding amount of shares and the interest in it. Let's say a brand new ETF was to launch. My channel is about helping you think. So if you like this, subscribe. I'm not gonna beg for likes and comments. You say whatever you want, do whatever you want, okay? But what if when a fund first comes out, like RDTE, remember? And what if it goes up, not because of the underlier, but because of people buying into it? Now, last quarter, when we looked at Amazon, AMZ Army, shout out, look, here I was at $18, you know Marge, right? Anyway, and now all of you know Miss Split. <laughs> this was when Rod was buying his car. You want to take a moment for some Rod entertainment? Okay, let's do it real quick. It's your friend Rod. Anyway, I'm just rambling at this point, but I just wanted to give you guys an update. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments, um, but that is... But back to AMZ. One of the things I said was they sandbagged the last earnings. They knew they were going to be slightly disappointing. And in the conference call, which is the second part of earnings, AMZ, actually Amazon, talked it down. They sa sacrificed the last quarter for this quarter. It's called sandbagging. Go back and watch the video I did on it. Let's see. Look at the sweaty pumpkin. All right. Oh. The pumpkins, the hamburgers, living in an RV, trying to make it sound like it's a great life, renting an apartment, buying your one share and your 500K portfolio, toes in the sand, living in an RV. I don't know. It's not my thing. Anyway, sweet tea to you. Um, let's keep going. So, Amzi, I told you they, they sandbagged, okay? Well, Amzi missed. Oracle predicts better than blah, 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 whatever. That was when I removed 100,000, okay? And, well, I was in at $22. Now, this is great. It's great. It's great. I really don't know if I could say anything other than, oh, well, maybe I need to refresh. So it's lagging slightly. But here's the problem, okay? Now, I'm not one to want to count my dividends and try to add it back into my principal to make me whole or get a total return. I believe, tell me if you believe this in the comments, that you shouldn't have to choose between your capital and the dividend income. You see, as income investors, we have already made a sacrifice and chosen AMZ over Amazon because we have sacrificed our growth for current income. Great idea. I love it. But we should never, ever, ever have capital depletion. So... When I do my interview with Jay, which will air on Monday evening, okay, after we have our interview, it's not going to be edited or anything. I just don't need any peanut gallery asking questions. We are going to get straight to it. It's going to be an enjoyable, respectable interview, but there will be no bedazzling. I'm not going to be bedazzled, okay? I'm not going to glaze over like the other interviewers and give you nothing. I'm not going to care about merch or new, new funds. I don't care. We're going to focus on two things. We're going to focus on, well, three things. Payouts, capital depletion, and also reverse splits, the deadly word. So here's what happens. After last earnings, when Amazon missed, AMZ took a hit because of the dynamics of our covered call fund. Okay, It took a hit, and it went down. And then what bothered me personally. Now, I want to ask Jay, I know they recently unleashed a new prospectus on Ulti. Could it be that AMZ is not performing as well because the prospectus is a bit archaic at this point? Yes. We are moving into the new paradigm at the speed of light. Yield Max has broken, okay, 
all paradigms that existed before it by marketing the, these funds to the masses in a great way. And there are many misconceptions I will clear up, but we can make money with these. I am a fan. But what happens in a covered call fund is usually it doesn't recover as well. See, I was bought in with many of you at $22. I bought a lot of shares, like 26000 So every dollar lost was $26,000 lost. The problem with a covered call fund over time hmm, shows a different picture. Okay, It shows that as the stock market naturally goes up and down, if you don't recover from the dividend, you're going to keep going down your capital. But the NAV will keep going down. It will go up as well, just like today. Look, look at that. But each time it will be weakened. The stock can continue to go up and not be weakened. When it gets hit like this, it's not weakened. It doesn't matter. But a crypto, oh, did I say crypto? Sorry, I slipped. An ETF, that's my background. An ETF cannot recover like this because it's selling cover calls to cap the growth. Understand this. So every time you're hit, okay, boom, you take another blow, you break an ankle, boom. The next market dump or missed earnings or whatever, boom, you're hit again. And over time, you may never see 22 again. These, I'm going to shift the paradigm. We all want to buy, hold, set it, and forget it. And that's what I thought this was. Shout out to Whiskey Danger, who keeps telling me I changed my strategy. You have to flow like water. Okay, as I've evolved in this space to conquer this space with all of you together, I have learned and adapted how we must play these momentum plays. These cannot be buy and hold forever like we thought. There are combinations of funds that I will be putting together to show you, but ideally, the best, in my opinion, the best chance for a single stock, well, let's get away from a single stock fund. Let's think about hiring traders to trade for us. It's kind of like you know how to trade options, some of you. It's kind of like this. You know how to wash your car, but you'd rather have somebody detail it. Maybe you don't have time. Maybe whatever. They can do it better than you. You don't want the stress. Maybe you're just too damn rich to be bothered. So when we look at covered call funds, we're paying people to trade for us. That's what the management fee is for. Now, if you do it on a single stock, the more frequently you get paid, the harder it is for that single stock to recover over time. And that's where you get the NAV depletion. If they're overpaying, that makes the situation worse. Okay. Ideally, you want to be capital flat, okay, to going up a little bit. But they say you can't have both. Well, if you can trade, I can keep my capital and just be paid the profits from your options trading. That's how it should work. A high yield may be sexy and attractive, but in the long run, if it's going to cripple us, what good is it? So one of the things, and I don't need your questions or anything in my comments. You could tell me your stories. I like to read your, your stuff. But what I really, really like is having a fund that can do it all. You see, we're tied with this to one stock. Let's take, let's take a simple, stupid stock like Disney, right? And let's look up um, DSO. All right, this is simple, stupid Disney. But because of the covered call strategy, where it's capped on the upside, and this is no fault of yield max, maybe it's the fault of single stock funds, okay? But this is the most boring thing in the world, look. Now, I'm not even gonna pull up Tesla or anything like that, okay? Or Mernie. Look, let's pull this up. I wasn't gonna pull it up, I'll pull it up, look. Okay, and now one just got hit, super microcomputer. Got hit with negative news. It's gonna be, and they got a $5 foot long from Jay. They got a $5 dividend right up front. Okay, and, um, and now they got hit with really bad news. They opened at $50, it's 35. I don't even know what it is now. Oh, bludgeoned. Okay, so the recovery from this is gonna be brutal. Okay, and they got a $5 foot long. I don't know if they're gonna get a $5 foot long. They better hope they don't get a $5 foot long. They'll never recover. Okay, so, you know, the equivalent of not recovering in a dividend is like, 
It's almost like, hey, why not just put $100,000 in your checking account, pay yourself $20,000 a month until the money runs out. <laughs> That's what it's like when you get your own money back. We want them to trade for us and make money for us. So what has the best chance of this happening? We need something from Yield Max, okay, that you know what I'm going to say. It's the ugly girl, okay? We need something from Yield Max that is not tied to a single stock. That gives them the ability to make money long, short, or neutral. That allows them to use covered calls or hold the underlying stocks. Yeah. Ulti has all of that. It's not tied to an index. They can basically just trade for us. The poor performance up until now, well, October 15th, they just changed their um, prospectus. Looks like it might be working. Jay and I are going to have a deep dive into Ulti. Now, my situation with Amzi is I'm not in it right now, okay? And do I miss it? Do I feel bad? No. What I'm waiting for now is I feel if you're in it, you know, with the dividends, maybe you do good, maybe you recover. Would I buy it now? I would actually be backing out of it now. This great news, these great earnings, I'd be backing out of it now if I held it, okay? But I don't, okay? Now, what am I waiting for? I love the idea of AMZ. I love the concept. That's what brought me to Yieldmax. My channel was originally called Yieldmax TV. I'm still, I think Yieldmax is great. Now, the only way I would ever go into an Amazon covered call again is with a new prospectus or a new fund. Because now we got a broken ankle, possibly fractured knee in this situation. Does Amazon have more momentum than this? Like, we're talking like, does it have misty type momentum? No. It's a slow, gradual up and to the right. Why else do I feel not comfortable with this strategy or prospectus or whatever it is that may be holding this back? They had two months to make a payout. You know, in the past, they paid us 97 cents. A cent. You want volatility? The last earnings, like I told you, they missed. The stock tanked, okay? The stock tanked. And then it went slow and steady up and to the right. And they had not one month, but two months almost to pay us. And what did we get? A mere pittance. It was actually disappointing. So it's all how you want to look at it. It's all how you want to look at it. I'm going to wrap this up here. Monday night, make sure your subscription is active. Make sure you're getting YouTube notifications. If you must unsubscribe and subscribe again, click all notifications because Monday night, I am going to premiere it. So if we look here, yeah, today was a massive up day. Yesterday was a massive down day. I mentioned it in my video. They usually cycle back and forth. Yesterday, I was able to catch Fiat at like $16 and run it up. I made a couple of thousand dollars. I sold it by the end of the day. If I would have held Fiat into this, it would have been a disaster. Let's take a look now. Hold on, let me pull up Fiat. Yeah, so I was in it yesterday. Let's see how bad coin is doing. The stock underlying it. Now, the question is, those of you in AMSI, what do you do? I can't advise you. I'm not a financial advisor. I would like maybe a better prospectus because I don't, I don't know. Over time, they just all seem to degrade. We can pull up, I mean, any one of them. I mean, you would think that Disney is something that would be safe, right? And you just look at it. It's just crap. And it pays a bad yield, too. A lot of it has to do with the underlier. This is why Ulti can be so great. Let me check coin stock. Of course, if coin is down today, let me see, it's up $5. It's such garbage. I wonder if I want to buy fiat. I hold it over the weekend. Hmm. I hold it over the weekend, and then I pay margin on it over the whole weekend for no reason. There's no dividend coming. This is a good logic you should apply. Number one, trade yield max stocks that are in a momentum move, like Misty had been, or NVIDIA. They all go through a momentum move, and then don't overstay your welcome. Find another fund. XDTE is a great fund that stays for a long time. 
you know, it stays, it holds its nav, but it pays a little bit. So we want a high yield whore, and that's why I like Ulti, all right? But you know, yeah, I'm not going to mess with, with Fiat. So let's look at Apple. Apple terribly destroyed it. They popped up at first in the aftermarket on sales, and then they just gave us terrible news. Just terrible, terrible, terrible. I don't understand what happened to Apple. I'm an Android person, you know, at least I don't have to eat them. All right, Misty. Oh, what happened 29? Oh, oh, Leo never loses. Leo never loses. Is that guy funny? All right, keyword if you stay to the end is Leo. Leo never loses. <laughs> Woo! Everyone, have a nice day. Shout out to the MZ Army. Those of you that held out, you almost recovered. I'll be chatting it up with Jay. We're going to have a nice, respectful conversation, and we're going to get real answers. It's going to be so exciting. Tune in Monday evening to my channel. It's going to premiere around 8.30, now, unless I, I don't plan on going to a hotel room with him or anything, okay? I'm not going to be like the other YouTubers. You're not going to see me running in a towel in a hotel room and Jay Diddy chasing me with oil and shit. No, none of that's happening. It's going to be a serious interview. So another keyword, if you really stay to the end, is Diddy Oil. Bye.